Hello everyone. Uh, today we will learn about the next part of the Spring Boot 3 series. So yesterday we have seen uh, how to set up a Spring Boot 3 uh, application and run the Hello World example or a Hello World controller example. So today we will continue with the next step like uh, we will integrate with the MongoDB and perform some code operations on this. So I'll just explain you the basics, what is dependencies and other things are required. So uh, you can refer to my earlier example for to download this code. I'll share the GitHub link as well. So now you can see for the MongoDB interaction. So I just implemented or uh, injected a dependency that is nothing but Spring Boot starter data MongoDB. You can download it from Spring IO. You can just insert into that is the only one dependency that is required. And you can see the I have created some of the package structure here is like that is standard package structure which I generally follow like controller exception model repositories service and service IMPLs and utilities whatever it is there so so I created that and one more other important thing is like to MongoDB configuration you can see that I have configured with whatever it is there uh, as a part of my uh, MongoDB configurations this will change according to your configuration whenever you set up a local or if anywhere you use from any other things so currently I'm using some of the free tire cloud application so uh, this is my configuration for now uh, so let us go through the what will so we are going to do the uh, basic code operations you can see that you will have I created a one of the user model as where I'm going to store the user and uh, create the user and update the user modify the user get the list of the user my user controller or user model has these all fields id email name status so this is advantage of using a swagger where you can see all the details in the swagger itself that's what i explained in the last video as well so let us let me open the user model to just to go through initial changes so i added it as a collection as a user and if you see I given as an index that is ID and the name, email, and status are not blank and created date and modified date for the audit purpose. So it's a very basic, simple example of a model where you will be using all the details of name and email and other things. So let us go to the controller. So I'll just created a controller. In the controller, I created a path as a slash user. You can now see I have created a get mapping for get all users and slash user map post mapping for creating a user and get mapping for fetching a user based on the email id again put mapping for updating user based on the email id because i'm considering email id as a unique for now for the example and delete mapping for the email as well for the user because i'm considering again uh, email as the unique so of course that will be the the point or a key for deletion as well it's a basic uh, structure how it looks and if you go to service it has extended the same values here so you can see all those redirections and other things we have here interface where we are going to implement in the service IMPL. so before i go into service IMPL, i'll just show you the repository how it repository looks like so what i did is like i just extended the mongo repository on and passed on the user as a key over there so you can see that i created this uh, custom methods where we find by name find by email and delete by email from this repository so now I'll go to the user service. So if you see one of the important thing is like, see now if you see the before, uh, whatever you're going to use it, all those information, right? Now we can see all the implementations and other things, right? So get all user. So I'm what I'm doing it like I'm returning the user and adding all the information. It's just a basic save uh, and find all for the returning all the users. I'll explain in when the swagger. And in the creating user, what I'm, I'm checking for the user input if it is not i'm sending it as a bad request and i'm uh, setting it as a created date and modified date for audit purpose and just saving the user here and sending the response as created because i'm using a http response uh, that is a standard way of how you write uh, apis which i explained in my earlier videos as well uh, currently i'm catching exception and sending it back as a, everything as an internal server error, error but in the next video which i'm going to cover how to handle the exception and other things where i'm going to cover uh, how you catch exception and throw the exception particular exception and and have those values cached in your ui and show that that will go in the next video step by step uh, this is fine by uh, user email id and updating a user what i'm doing is like for updating a user i'm just fetching that user based on the email id and checking if it is present and just modifying the user again just passing the what i got it as from the input same for 
the response as well HTTP statuses and deleting the user as well for the status as well so I'm currently I'm running this application already on 8080 uh, so I'll just show you a couple of other things which you may be seeing it see now you can see the I, I used one of the post mapping uh, if I'm correct there so I used as a valid at valid annotation because I want to valid validate the request body so now if you see before it was uh, J2W and other uh, Java uh, X annotations we used to use but now we are using a Spring Boot 3 so it's automatically takes all the inputs from the Jakarta so we are using uh, automatically we are fetching from the Jakarta libraries and other things so now I'm running the application let me go to my swagger I'll just refresh it so now I'll try to what I'll do like let me fetch all the users which are the users are there just I'm trying to execute it here so if you see I have a uh, three users like named portal mac and test user and other things whatever we have so now if i go to my mongo compass if i refresh it here see i have three three these three are being fetched there so let me try to insert one more user here i'm just trying to give it as an example so it's a manual there so i'm id i am not set it to sequence so i'm just adding it manually as a five and you have a like uh, tech interface i'm just give as a tech interface at gmail.com uh, true i'm not giving a created data end date for now because i'll just uh, auto appending in the code itself i'll just try to run it here so now if i run it here see i got the response file and everything here so created data is responded back and everything let, let us check and go back to check here that is we created other yeah see you can see it is created here already as a new one so our create is is working as expected and the get if i get do a get again so you see that latest one is already available here so another one i'll show it here is like fetch by email id probably i'll use the same email id what we created so it will be easy to understand so this is the main advantage of using a swagger you don't need a postman and everything most of the things you can do almost everything you can do it uh, here in the swagger itself so you can see i'll try to search it if i'm able to find yes that's here you go so you can see i'm already fetching this data using the email id that's also working as expected okay so this is the basic how it works and all the information let me uh, try and update if anything is there i'll just go and update uh, if any one of them uh, i'm updating using a put mapping and updating here so i'm using a as a path variable as an email id and as well as i'm just having all the information of the email id and what we had right let me copy that content so that you don't need to worry about uh, uh, other things here so what i'll do is like email id will be same text test interface testing i'll modify it rest everything i'm keeping it same and I just don't want to send this information because it is it is going to be picked up automatically based on the email ID. This is what I'll try to see it whether it works or not. So now it is a bad request because I'm not sending anything here. I'll just put it back. Okay. But what it will does is like it will recreate and other things. Okay. So let me see. See now I got the response because I'm sending it explicitly. That's why it is taking but in your code you modify it uh, as as required so i'll just go through mongo compass and i'll refresh it and you see uh, yeah so name should be modified so now you see the name is modified tech interface testing the name has been uh, modified for that its update is also working this is how the whole uh, basic code operation works with respect to uh, uh, all the controllers and the service and other things you can see and you can test it and you can see all those uh, models and everything so this is a very very basic example currently i'm trying to give and one more important like now we have open api docs here so i'll just show you how it looks now now see now whatever we have already added everything is 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 recorded here and come to as, as a json you can just uh, store this as a json and you'll be able to use it anywhere else uh, whenever you want to do a, a open API spec import or based on that so, kind of, so the next video i'll come up with the next version like how to handle uh, errors and exceptions and how to throw a proper erasing message uh, I, this is just a basic example so i'll, I'll come up with a next video with one of the more advanced errors and uh, spring boot 3 and the spring 17 and 19 uh, features and everything 
so i'm setting up all the base because that's why i'm creating these basic videos so that you will get a view of from start to end everything uh, explained in step by step thank you thanks a lot